the yeah. problem with NIL stuff is that you know we have a we had a top five recruiting class. We lost a four star receiver to Georgia. He flipped. Yeah. We had Colton Vasick, that defensive end from Texas, four star who flipped to Texas from us. We and still have the the quarterback from yeah, Denton. We still, we still have Jackson Arnold, and he doesn't seem to be wavering. Yeah. And that's good news, but you just never know. And, and unfortunately, you know, these rebuilding years where your team is not quite so successful, it, it has the potential to really hurt you because if teams perceive you as not being an elite level team that's going to be on the national stage uh, week after week, yeah. you know, they can showcase their talents and potentially vault themselves into a pro career. <clears throat> they may jump ship. Now, the problem that you have is that a Georgia and an Alabama, a Texas, a USC, an Ohio State, they've only got a limited number of starting spots. There's yeah. only two cornerbacks on the field at any given time. There's only two or three wide receivers. There's only one tight end, maybe two if you have a... And, and geography doesn't come into play like it used to. There's not that much loyalty to the state. No. And, no oh, you no. cannot... Especially just, with the NIL contracts. Yeah. So it's you know, current. we lost that five-star defensive lineman. I had, yeah. I had yeah. a rep that had a good friend with inside knowledge that that number one defensive tackle in the country was a lock for Oklahoma. And then all of a sudden, he got offered like a $6 million NIL contract. To A&M? A&M or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. He, went. he went there. Well, Jimbo Fisher, that's not panning out too well for them. It's not panning out too well for them. They had the number one recruit <clears throat> this past year, and they're very middle of the road. I, I just, you know, I, I, I thought we'd do better than this. I knew there may be yeah. a downturn, but I didn't think there'd be a downturn 49 to nothing to Texas. <clears throat> well, we have no backup quarterback. Yeah, that is one thing that I read, is that of all the good moves that Brett Venables made, coaching-wise and recruiting-wise, transfer portal-wise, to kind of shore things up, because we lost a lot. Yeah. Between our head coach leaving, multiple different assistant coaches leaving, five-star recruits and Mario Williams as a wide receiver, and yeah. uh, the other kid um, at quarterback, Caleb. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then losing most of our defensive starters to either graduation uh, or the draft. Uh, we had to replace a lot, but the one area where he clearly came up short was a quarterback. Yeah. He did not get a short up quarterback. First of all, Dylan Gabriel is good. He's not great, not, not by any means. He is not a great quarterback. No. Um, and then anything behind him is barely better than a high school quarterback. There's a flower mound quarterback that's supposed to be really good, but I talked to his coach, uh -huh. um, his middle school coach, and he said when he gets hit, it's not a pretty sight. He he's he's really his parents are very plugged into networking and getting him into the right camps, and they really umped his marketability. Yeah. But he is not the quarterback that You're a lot of people know. Uh -uh. Tough. Doesn't have toughness. So it's the Denton kid that were I don't know. You know, what, what we need is a team full of Brent Venables, guys that maybe aren't the <clears throat> fastest, aren't the strongest, aren't the most physically gifted, yeah. but just blue-collar working guys that can think on their feet, work within a system, and play with discipline, and play with heart, play yeah. with toughness. That's what we've got to have. And, and I have faith in that Dabo Sweeney coaching tree. Mm -hmm. Um, building the character, not the Jimbo Fisher. Let's, let's just make it happen right now. Yeah. But and parents are gonna. That's gonna yeah. eventually. People are gonna understand that, and they're gonna. And you know, of course, Brent Venables grew up with that. Not only was he an overachiever as a player, but he coached under Bill Snyder. Bill Snyder chronically took two and three star talent and made yeah. it into national contenders. That's right. Every year at Kansas State. Yeah. You can't recruit to Manhattan. Kansas. No. You take what you can get and you develop talent. You go out and you scout and say, listen, this guy's not the fastest or strongest, but he's got a nose for the ball. Yeah. He's always around the ball. He hits hard. He plays every down with grit and with discipline. <clears throat> That's the player that I want. That's the player I need on my team. We were at the game against Baylor, and I saw people leaving in the third quarter to a team we lost by a field goal. So yeah. our fans are so spoiled. So fickle. They're so fickle. Yeah. 
it's crazy to call for this guy's head. I mean, give him two years, but yeah, you know, I've got to say. So. Yeah, well, hang All right. right here. Ken will get you. All right. Okay. All right. One month with x-rays. Uh-huh.